what we focus on is um, what I characterize as constitutional symptoms. So a lot of um, things that may not necessarily be identifiable via lab work. And that includes symptoms such as fatigue, um, hair loss, rashes, general aches and pains um, that may not necessarily present in a severe way. And so sometimes we may feel that as patients, maybe this is something we can fight through or it's not a big deal, or maybe it's because we were recently sick or had a stressful time at work. Um, things like that are part, just part of the diagnostic criteria. Um, we also look at physical symptoms, and so as rheumatologists or other doctors, we look for stiff swelling in the joints as one thing, mouth ulcers, um, eye inflammation, hair inflammation, general rashes. In terms of lab work, looking at inflammation markers is super important, as well as general blood count or kidney liver function. Those all help us with the diagnosis. Another main part of looking at autoimmune disease is looking at antibodies. So what's important to look at is um, what sort of antibodies might be present in the blood. And some may be relevant, some may be not, and some we just carry, and it doesn't mean that we have lupus. So you may be familiar with some of the diagnostic criteria that maybe your doctor um, has looked at for you, such as a, an ANA or an anti-nuclear antibody. Um, that is the most nonspecific antibody for autoimmune disease, and about 10 to 15 percent normal healthy people may carry it in their blood without any consequence. But when we see someone with a referral with a positive ANA and certain symptoms, as I mentioned before, we always want to check for more specific antibodies. So another few important ones that you may hear about or know or you may have is a double-stranded DNA or a Smith antibody. Now, you don't need to have both or all of them to have the diagnosis of lupus, but it certainly helps in that case. Another big aspect is um, something called antiphospholipid antibodies, which are blood clotting antibodies. So that's always something else that we check too, and the three that make up this particular set of antibodies are something called a lupus anticoagulant, a cardiolipin antibody, or a beta-2 glycoprotein. And again, you don't have to have all of them, but certainly some of them help us uh, gauge towards the diagnosis. Another big thing we look at are called complements, complement levels. So these are part of the immune system, and you may recognize them as C3 and C4. Uh, what we see when immune activation is going on is that these complement levels will drop. So you may see lower C3, C4 levels when your disease is a little bit more active, and then they'll come up naturally as the, your disease is being treated uh, correctly. Another big thing with lupus patients that we always want to screen for is uh, something called lupus nephritis, which is involvement of the kidneys. Now this is super important to screen, and it's easy to do so because the main thing we always want to check is a urine sample. You want to look at the urine to see if someone is leaking protein. Um, so that's a big aspect of how we screen for kidney disease. And also if your blood pressure is going up and there's no other cause or you're getting um, swelling in your extremities or you've noticed some extra foam in the urine, that can also point towards that you're losing protein uh, through the kidneys or um, through the urine.